In this video, we're going to be looking at the different ways that you can measure rate of reaction. So in every case, we're going to need to measure how long it takes something to happen, but depending on your reaction depends on what that something is. One of the most common ways of measuring rate of reaction is to measure the volume of gas collected in a set period of time. To do this, we can collect the gas using a gas syringe or through displacement of water as shown here. The reaction really only needs one thing for these methods to be suitable, which is that it's generating a gas. By that, I mean that there's no gaseous substances in the reactants and that they're only appearing in the products. For the gas syringe, it can be producing any gas at all. But for the displacement of water, you really need to check that your gas isn't soluble in water, otherwise it's gonna dissolve in the water and that won't help you to measure it. So be careful about gases like ammonia or oxygen that are pretty soluble in water. Another way that we can measure rate of reaction is by measuring change in mass of our reaction vessel. To do this, we put our reaction vessel on top of a balance and we monitor how the mass changes over time. This normally works because a gas will be escaping and therefore the mass will be decreasing as time goes on. So the criteria for this is that your gas has to be kind of a heavy gas in order to be able to be recorded. So we're talking gases like carbon dioxide or chlorine that are really going to make a difference to the mass overall. Hydrogen doesn't weigh a lot, so we probably wouldn't use this method for measuring the change in mass due to hydrogen being lost. The other thing to be aware of in this is that we often put this piece of cotton wool in the top of the reaction vessel. And what this is there for is to stop any liquid from splashing out of the vessel so that the only mass change that we're observing is the loss of gas and not the loss of any liquid. If you haven't got any changes of state happening in your reaction, one thing to bear in mind is that the reaction might be changing colour. So it might be going from colourless to coloured or vice versa. The best thing to keep an eye out for here is really the appearance or the disappearance of halogens. Because at GCSE, they're the only things that we really know are definitely coloured. And so keeping an eye out for these can tell us whether it might be changing colour as the reaction goes on. The last option in GCSE is that you might also get the appearance of a precipitate or a solid product. So for this, you need a solid to appear at the end of the reaction that wasn't there at the beginning. So normally you start with two aqueous reactants and then at the end, you're ending up with a solid product. So normally we use a method called the disappearing cross method. And what this is, is that we look from the top and look at the reaction vessel until we can't see the X that's underneath the reaction vessel because it's being obscured by the solid that's been generated. This has been a summary of the ways to measure rate of reaction. Uh, I hope that you've learned something new today. Check out the next video, which is all about some examples and how to pick which one works in which scenario.